Hello guys, how are you all, welcome back to my channel, so, today we are gonna see, what if Naruto gains new power that can fade Kaiubi, part 1, subscribe if you enjoy the video, and also check the description, so let's begin the story. I'm going to kill you Naruto rushes forward, his eyes red with slit pupils, and his nails now claws. The mirror shatters, and the masked boy jumps out, trying to dive a needle into the back of his neck. He rolls out of the way and dust is kicked up by the impact. The masked boy tries to get into another mirror, but is grabbed by Naruto. Naruto's chakra skyrockets and the mirrors fall to the ground. He charges his chakra into his hand and lands a powerful hit to the boy's mask, sending him tumbling across the bridge. Naruto charges again as the mask cracks and falls. He is in midair when he sees the boy's face, recognizing it as the boy he met in the forest the day before. His once red eyes turn back to their original cerulean color. Just before he reaches the boy, another ice mirror comes up between them. Unable to stop or dodge, Naruto smashes into it and is sent to the ground in a heap. The boy moves to his side cautiously and finds him unconscious. Just as he's about to finish him, he hears the sound of birds chirping. Zabuza dot without a moment's hesitation, he rushes to Zabuza's side. The hand of Naruto's sensei, Kakashi, impales his chest. He removes the hand and the boy falls to the ground. Clapping comes from behind them from the short businessman Gato. It seems that the demon of the hidden mist is a baby demon at best. That brat of yours was weak and useless. I'll pay double to the one who brings me his head. It seems that we don't have to continue this Kakashi dot staining his arm, he picks up his and runs towards Gato's small army. He slices through the army, until he reaches Gato, whose head makes a splash in the sea. Zabuza stumbles over to where Kakashi stands and collapses. Kakashi, could you bring Haku over to me Kakashi? Picks up the boy and lays him beside Zabuza, whose bandages fell during his slaughter of Gato's men. It begins to snow. Haku, are you crying? I wish I could go to the same place as you. Zabuza dies of his wounds, and the small army is regrouping. He killed our meal ticket, now we have to go raid the village. A crossbow bolt sticks into the man's forehead, Inari, and the villagers stand at the end of the bridge. Not one of you is stepping foot on our country, again Kakashi creates a line of shadow clones that stretches to both sides of the bridge. The men easily become scared and jump off the bridge to escape. Unseen by everyone, a colossal gate appears at the unfinished end of the bridge. The doors swing open slowly, and two figures walk out, one man and one woman. They both have feathered capes, the man's black, the woman's white, their hair the same color as their capes. Their clothes were gray, both pants and sleeveless shirts. What a performance. I agree. I haven't seen this in some time. Nor I, but let's make it more interesting. What do you have in mind brother? Let's bestow upon two mortals some of our power and see what they do with it. They will have to be strong-willed individuals to withstand the power. Yes indeed, and I have found such a person in that boy there. You mean the one who contains the demon the black clad man nods. Do you really think he can handle both yours and the demon's power? I believe he can, but if not, your choice will be able to stop him. You must hurry and choose, we must keep balance in this world. Very well, I'll leave now. When I find the other, I'll contact you. The cape turns out to be wings, and she takes off into the sky. A noise from within the gate made the man turn around. The dark outline of a giant man was in the gateway. You know that if you do this that the two will be connected to each other, do you not? Yes we do, but with the power we're giving them, they could change the world, for either good or evil. Dust having power is nothing if they don't know how to use it. That boy is powerful, even without the demon. Keep an eye on him, with too much power, he could enter our realm, and his demon doesn't care for us much. What demon does? Besides, Kaiubi is no match for you and in our realm, it is even weaker than it is now. You underestimate the boy, he would be nearly unstoppable. You could not have found a being with more willpower than this boy. Were he ever to cross over, he would be a god. The giant walked back into the darkness of the gate. Brother, I'm ready. Very well, then let us begin. He walked past the villagers who were removing the dead, a pink-haired girl who was crying over a boy's body, Kakashi sitting with a glazed-over look, and more villagers before reaching the boy. He spread his wings and summoned a black ball into the palm of his hand. In 3, 2, 1, and now. He shoved the ball into Naruto's chest. Naruto's body starts to shake violently, catching the attention of the people around him. The dazed Kakashi rushed to his side as a powerful wave of energy erupted from him. The winged man smirks. Is it done brother? Yes it is, now return so we can leave. It will be just a moment. He started back to the gate. The boy who was being wept over was awake and trying to get over to Naruto. The villagers were all around him, looking concerned. He had just reached the gate as his sister landed. Since you know of mine, who is yours? A girl from the same village as yours. Must you do everything opposite of me? Actually, yes. Like you and I, these two are complete opposites. 
The only things they have in common other than where they live, is the desire to prove themselves and their age. I see, you pick that girl, that will certainly make this entertaining, but I have been warned to keep an eye on this one. His willpower is far beyond what I had first thought, so much so that Lord Exodus came himself. What did he say? That we are to make sure the boy never crosses over to our realm, because if he did, almost nothing could stop him. Not even the thirteen of them together. He didn't say that, only that the boy would be a god if he did. Are we going to help them learn how to use our gifts? I suppose we could, but for now we'll wait and see if they can do it themselves. Together they walk back through the gate, the doors closing behind them. Naruto opened his eyes and was staring at the ceiling. Tazuna's house. He slowly sat up, his body protesting with pain. What happened? Pushing himself to his feet, he stumbled out of the room. While he was going down the stairs, his legs gave out and he fell down the rest, crushing to the bottom. Damn that hurt Dotty rubbed the back of his head where it met the last step. Tsunami came running up to him. Are you alright Naruto? Yeah, I'm fine. How long was I out? Just about two days. You should really take it easy, you're going to be kind of stiff for a little while. Maybe you're right. I'm gonna walk around a bit outside to work the chinks out. Just don't do anything too demanding, you could really hurt yourself. I wouldn't think of it. Like you think anyway. Just past the tsunami, Sasuke sat at the kitchen table. Naruto's mouth hung open. Sasuke Naruto rubbed his eyes, but everything stayed the same. You're alive. The needles missed just barely, either he made a mistake, or he intended to make it look like I died. What happened? I'm not really sure, when I came to, the villagers were at the bridge, Zabuza and his partner Haku were dead and you were unconscious. You were also shaking and emitting a high level of power. I want to know where it came from. Your guess is as good as mine. So you're saying you don't know what that power was? If I did, I would have used it to stomp you into the ground before. Now that I know it's there, I'm going to try to harness it. Damn that fox, what's it trying to do now? See you later Sasuke, I'm gonna go for a walk. There's a reason why I'm here instead of with Kakashi and Sakura. To rob the fact that your Sharingan activated in my face. No, now come on. Sasuke stood up and walked towards the door with Naruto just behind. Sasuke led him to a cliff, not far from the bridge, that looked over the sea. There near the edge was Abusa's sword sticking into the ground, the pieces of Haku's mask resting against it. Kakashi decided to bury them. He told me to bring you here when you woke up. Thanks, even if you didn't want to do it. I've done worse jobs before. Like catching that damn cat over and over. Naruto smiled. We should just kill it next time. Who says there will be a next time? Are you kidding, when the old man hears about this, we'll never be able to do a higher mission until we're promoted. We finished it didn't we? Yes, but the two of us nearly died, Sakura didn't do shit, as usual, and the only reason we finished is because of Kakashi. He's gonna raise requirements for mission ranks, and we'll be stuck doing D ranks until we're at least dot. You really think he'll do that? I know he will. He looks at the village like everyone is his family, and because of that, he'll do everything in his power to protect us, even if it's against our will. He's a good leader, but a better person. I'm heading back, the others will be back by nightfall for dinner. Thanks again Sasuke. I'll probably be back before them. Sasuke turned and left the way they came. Naruto just stared at the grave for a few moments. Haku, did I do this to you? He went around the sword and sat down with his back against the side of the blade. He closes his eyes and finds himself in a sword-like passage. He looks around. Where the hell am I? Is this some kind of he? Forms a seal. Kai. Nothing happens. Great, not only do I not know where I am, but I can't feel my chakra either. Far down the tunnel, a red light appears. What the hell, it's not like I know how to get out of here. As he gets closer, an ominous feeling overcomes him. He starts to question the smartness of deciding to walk towards the light. Despite these feelings, he continues to walk and is engulfed in the light. When he is able to see something other than red, he stares in awe at the room he entered. The room was huge, he could not see either side walls or the ceiling, and directly in front of him was a large gate, which was only being held shut by a piece of paper that read seal. Oh this just gets better and better. Dot from deep within the darkness behind the gate came a growl. What do you want, brat? Who are you and where are we? Laughter echoed in the room, and a large pair of blood-red eyes appeared behind the gate, followed by a large pointed tooth smile. You must be dumber than I thought. We are in your mind, and I am your worst nightmare, Kaiubi no Kitsune. That's a laugh, you are a pleasant dream compared to my real worst nightmare. Since I'm here, are you the cause of that power surge Sasuke was talking about? I wish I had that kind of power over you. No, that was the work of another. You mean something else is sealed in me too. Are you really this stupid? No mortal could handle the stress of having two other beings sealed within them, most can't handle even one. Well, aren't I special? If it wasn't you then who was it? I suppose you could call him a fallen angel. He and his kind kill demons and angels out of envy, while demons reside in hell and angels in heaven, they have to find a place to reside. 
They found one that is alongside yours and can see the things that go on in yours. If they killed demons, why haven't you and the other demons gone and killed them? We cannot enter their realm and even if we could, our powers would be cut in half. It's the exact opposite of your world. He gave you power, which is unknown to me, but I do know that in order to do so, his sister would have had to give power to another, or your world would be ripped apart. Great, so not only do I house a demon, but if I or this other person die, the world ends. Is there something else, I was sleeping. Just one more thing, did we kill Haku? No, you wussed out last minute and got knocked out. I'm going back to bed, night dot the eyes and teeth disappeared and Naruto headed back the way he came. One month later, the day before they were to start back to Konoha, Naruto was once again standing in front of the sword. Kakashi had told him what had happened on the bridge. He stared at the blade, deep in thought. Haku died to protect his precious person, and Sasuke nearly died to protect me, but is that enough to make him precious to me? All we really do is fight each other, the only things we have in common are the desire to grow stronger and to prove that we are better than each other, so we're rivals. Even if we aren't friends, I would give my life to protect him because we are teammates. Hey loser, what's up with you, you've been kind of distant since you woke up after the fight on the bridge. I've had a lot on my mind. Sasuke smirked. That's a first. You're right, normally I don't think this long or hard on any one thing. Sasuke smirk dropped. What are we? That's a pretty stupid question, we're shinobi. That's not what I meant. I mean you and I, are we friends, rivals, or just teammates, I'm having a hard time trying to determine the answer. I wouldn't really consider us friends, seeing as how we're always at each other's throats. You're pretty decent in some aspects, but you could never keep up with me enough to be a rival. However, things change in unexpected ways, so who knows how things will turn out. Thanks Asuk, I think I found my answer. Dottie walks forward and places his hand on the sharp edge of the blade. He jerks his hand upward and cuts open his palm. I swear that I will do everything in my power to protect those who mean the most to me. I am no one's tool, and I never will be. As blood runs down the blade, and when it touches the ground, the sword begins to glow red. The blade itself started to change, the half circle cut from the edge was no longer there. Instead, a fox's head appeared on both sides, its jaws open, its ears pulled back, and its eyes as red as the blood still running down it. The glowing died off, and the blade was black, and the lines of the engraved fox were white. What did you do? I have no idea, I just cut my hand on it because I don't have a kunai on me. Sasuke walked over and was about to grab the handle when a voice stopped him. I wouldn't do that. The two boys turned to see Kakashi reading from his orange book. What he just did is something that skilled swordsmiths usually have high paying customers do. Only someone who shares the blood that was placed on the blade, meaning Naruto and his family, can wield that sword now. What would happen if someone tried? I don't know, it depends on the sword. It could be anything from a shock to burns, or even instant death. Yeah right, like a sword could deny someone from using it. If you don't believe me, go ahead and try, but neither he nor I will be held responsible. Sasuke was having a hard time trying to decide if he should believe Kakashi, in the end, he decided that Kakashi wouldn't joke about one of them getting hurt just to help another. He turned and walked away, heading back to Tazuna's house. Is what you said true? Yes. You have to be careful where you leave that from now on. I suggest you use a storage scroll, especially since it has a fox engraved into it. I suppose, but I don't know anything about storage scrolls. Kakashi took out a scroll and started marking out kanji all over it. Here, that will do for now, but when we get back, I have some sealing scrolls you could borrow. Just place the sword on top and push some chakra into it, do the same to get it out. He handed the scroll to Naruto and followed after Sasuke. Naruto pulled the sword from the ground to find it had kept the same shape, except that the hole near the end wasn't there anymore, and its place was a spiral like the one on the back of his jacket. I promise you Zabuza, I will put your sword to good use. Unfortunately, I do not know the name you used for it. He closed his eyes as he thought, and he heard a voice speaking within his mind that was neither his nor Kaiubi's. My name is Itu Kabao. He looked from the sword to the scroll. He unrolled the scroll and placed the sword on it before placing chakra into the scroll. In a puff of smoke the sword was gone, and in the center of the kanji Kakashi had written, was the kanji for sword. Smiling, Naruto rolled up the scroll and pocketed it. It took Kabao and power from a fallen angel, what a strange mission this turned into. Shaking his head, he started back to Tazuna's house. As he walked, he thought of ways to carry his sword without sealing it. He came up with several, but one stuck out among the others. But he would have to wait until he got back to Konoha, as he didn't have what he needed with him. Every time that they stopped, no matter how tired he was, Naruto wanted to continue. He didn't know why, but he felt like he was being drawn to something, but he shrugged it off as being homesick. As they got closer, the feeling got stronger and stronger. They arrived at the gate around midnight and went their separate ways, deciding to see the Hokage in the morning. 
Instead of going home, Naruto wandered around trying to find the source of the feeling. He was having a hard time, as it was moving quickly. Damn it, if I don't find it soon, I'm gonna go insane. It could be the other, it would be wise to know as they have the power to kill you if they want to. Even with both yours and the guy's power. They kill demons, remember, his sister would have given them the power to stop you if you couldn't handle both. I hope it's not someone who hates me because of you then. He followed the feeling to a small clearing with a waterfall. He couldn't see anyone there, but he knew they were. He jumped and landed silently in a nearby tree. He saw a silhouette on the water, moving in a dance-like motion. He was too far away to see anything distinct, so he moved as quietly as possible to get closer. He hid behind a large boulder and peeked around it. His mouth was agape. He saw a girl, but the moon was to her back and hid her face. One word came to his mind, beautiful. He felt a sharp pain in his back, but refused to make a sound, he slowly moved away as the pain became greater. His hand was over his shoulder trying to find the cause, what he didn't see was that the girl was doing the same. He ran all the way home, almost as soon as he closed the door, he passed out from the pain. Akashi was standing in front of the hokage with Sasuke and Sakura. I'm sorry sir, he's normally on time. It's alright Kakashi, I've known him for some time, and he's not a morning person, but I'll go see him after we're done to make sure everything's okay. Now report. Kakashi began, and Sasuke spoke up when they came to the part where Kakashi was out from chakra exhaustion. Sandame listened closely, shocked and angry at why transpired. When they finished, he dismissed Sasuke and Sakura, but had Kakashi stay. He made some hand seals, and his chakra enveloped the room. Do you have reason to believe the surge was the Kaiubi? No, I felt Kaiubi's chakra use before that, but only for a few moments, this was like nothing I've ever felt before. Is it possible that he has a bloodline limit? Anything is possible with Naruto. Only Rashi knew where he came from and he took it to his grave. For all I know, he might not have been from this village to begin with. Be sure to inform me if this happens again. I believe it already has, last night I felt it again, not nearly as powerful, but I also felt another source, but both were gone by the time I realized what it was. I see, I felt it as well, but I haven't received any complaints about it from any villagers or shinobi. His eyes widen slightly. Kakashi, we have to get to Naruto's house now they both disappeared in a puff of smoke. When Naruto woke up, the pain was gone. What the hell was that he placed his hand on his back and felt something that wasn't there before. He turned his head slowly and nearly fainted from shock. His clothes were ripped open, and two black feathered wings were sticking out from his shoulder blades. At first he thought they were an illusion, and tried to dispel it, but they stayed in place. He decided to try and move them, and he stretched them to full length, they reached 5 feet from tip to tip. This is awesome he folded them up against his back, but they were still visible to the sides. Hit, you do realize that that was your last set of clothes. Damn it, you're right. Oh well, I had to go get some things from shops today anyway. I suggest you hide your wings, I don't think these damn people will take kindly to them. Naruto made a single seal. Henge Dottie transformed into himself with clothes and no wings. He walked to the door and there were two pops behind him. He turned to find Kakashi and Sandane. Naruto, are you alright? Fine, why wouldn't I be? You remember how you were told about the surge on the bridge Naruto nodded. It happened again last night, and since the Hokage hadn't received any complaints, we feared that they may have thought it was Kaiubi and attacked you. Well, I'm fine as you can see, sorry if I missed the debriefing, I guess I overslept. It's alright Naruto, I'm just glad you're safe. Sorry for worrying you old man. I have to go into town to get a few things, I'll see you both later. Naruto, I was planning to give you those scrolls I told you about at the meeting, but now is as good a time as any dot he handed the scroll to him. When you finish with that one, come and ask me for the next. I have three for you to use, maybe you'll become a seal master. Could be interesting, thanks Kakashi Sensei. You're welcome Naruto. Remember, be at the bridge at 8 tomorrow for the next mission. Both, he and the Hokage disappeared in another puff of smoke. Naruto let out a breath of relief. A few seconds earlier and I would have had to explain about my wings. He walked out of his apartment, not even bothering to lock his door, but as soon as he did, he realized that he could no longer feel the girl's power calling him. So we were drawn to each other so we could meet. Damn pain, I didn't even get her name, or see her face. As he walked, he was unaware of anything going on around him, especially Hinata Hayuga following him. He was busy thinking of what to get. There's no way to wear a shirt with my wings, so the normal thing is out, thank god. But I can't really run around in only pants. Wear a cloak kit. Not only will it cover your wings, but you wouldn't have to worry about the Ichiha stealing yours, as you could perform the hand signs beneath it, and you could walk around without a shirt. That's not a bad idea. Now that Sasuke has the Sharingan, I have to be more careful when fighting around him. But I have to be careful when I have to bring my hands out to fight, and not to move my wings too much. Use a hinge to hide them when you have to. The Sharingan can't see through it. 
unless you're fighting him, he probably won't notice, as you will be in front with your back to him, behind him where he can't see you, or next to him. Sounds good to me. He walks into a cloth store and buys a large amount of tan cloth, several metal clasps, and five yards of thick red rope. He walked out and came face to face with Hinata. Hey Hinata, haven't seen you in a while, how are you? I am fine. Naruto was looking around with a worried look on his face. What is it Naruto? Do you feel her face became worried as well? Never mind, it's probably Konohimaru or something. He's always trying to get the drop on me, but he's never used to, normally he tries to sneak up on me in a square rock or a bush. Hinata giggled and pointed, he turned around, and sure enough there was a square rock with eye holes. Naruto sighed and shook his head. For the last time, rocks aren't perfect squares, and bushes are meant for wooded areas. The top popped off and three kids came out. See, isn't he a great ninja? They both nodded. Who is Konohimaru? The girl spoke up. I'm Ogi and he's Yudin. When they all jumped out of the box, he was starting to have a bad feeling. All three started talking at the same time. And we're the Konohimaru core boss. Naruto slapped his hand to his head, muttering why me? Konohimaru noticed Hinata and smiled. Who's she, boss, your girlfriend Hinata immediately blushed. She is a friend from the academy, her name is Hinata Hayuga. Hinata, this brat here is Hokage's grandson, Konohimaru. It's nice to meet you all. I'm sorry, but I have to get going. Alright, see you later Hinata. She walked away, and Naruto turned back to the three children. Did you want something or what? Would you play ninja with us? Why would I play ninja when I am one they all had big puppy dog eyes? He sighed. I hate it when you do that. Fine, I'll play with you tomorrow after my mission, okay? They had big smiles now. Yay. I'll see you tomorrow, I have something to do yet. Dottie went down the road a little ways and brought some long strips of leather before heading home. When he got there, there were the normal things, the door busted in, the place torn apart, and things like died demon written on the walls. He created 10 clones and sent them to clean up while he took it to Kabao out of the scroll. He cut off just enough cloth to wrap it around the blade and tightly strapped it in place with most of the leather strips, the clasp at the base by the handle, which was left uncovered. He took the rope and cut off a yard and a half and placed it off to the side. He had picked this rope because of its color and that it was made up of nine separate cords. He pushed some chakra into it when he was at the store and found that he could lengthen it, but it became thinner. He attached it to the end of the handle and undid about 8 inches of the other end, he tied a knot there so it wouldn't unravel further, and tied another one to each end of the cords. He smiled as he lifted the sword with ease. Interesting choice kit, instead of a fox head, a red rope with 9 tails. It's mainly to carry it around, but I'm sure I could use it in an attack too. His clones finished picking up and he dismissed all but two. One started to unravel the last of the rope into the 9 cords, while the other stood still with his wings folded to his back. Naruto cut off a strip a foot wide and wrapped the rest of the cloth around him, the bottom coming to his knees. Can you move alright it nodded. He made sure the opening was in the front and cut the rest of the leather into two small strips and strapped the cloak shut near the neck while still being able to bring the hands out without breaking them. There was a lot of extra cloth by the neck, so he sewed it into a collar that left the face visible from the front but blocked from the sides up to just under the eyes. The clone in the cloak smiled and vanished, the cloak falling to the ground, Naruto picked it up and laid it on the back of his only chair. The other clone vanished too, as he had finished his task. Hmm, I need 18 of something fairly small, but still big enough to do its job. He looks around and his gaze falls on a pouch that the Hokage had given him on his fifth birthday. Those will do nicely. He goes over and pours the contents into his hand. They were marbles, most of which were too big to fit through the ring of a kunai. He took 18 of those and put the rest back into the pouch. Now how to attach them. I know a way, but it will cost you. What will it cost me? What do you think, freedom? Hell no, you would kill me and everyone else, there would be no point. Maybe you aren't as stupid as I first thought. Alright kid, what do you think is a fair trade? Give me some time, and when I become proficient with seals, I'll see what I can do about modifying the seal. What would I get from this? You tell me. I already told you. And I already told you no, but I could do the next best thing. I could make it so you could see, hear, feel, and even taste what I do. Taste might be pushing it, you mainly eat that detestable ramen. I'll try to cut back on it, but I'll have to get better at cooking, cause you know as well as I do that they won't let me in anywhere else. I accept, and I'll also throw in the ability to summon foxes. I don't know how to summon it. I'll teach you, but there is a benefit for me by you learning too. What are you talking about? I am the boss, you can summon me to help you in battle. I'll be my normal height, but I won't be able to attack anyone you don't want me to, because you can dismiss me if you want to. It's a small taste of freedom for me. That sounds good to me, you get freedom now and then, and I get a powerful demon to fight alongside me if I need help. The most powerful of the nine Bijuu. Bijuu? Yes, the nine-tailed demons. 
Besides me, there is Shukaku the raccoon dog, Nekamato the cat, Isonate the shark, Soku the cockatrice, Haku the dog, Raiju the weasel, Kaku the badger, and Yamato no Orochi the snake. I was undefeated when the Biju war was fought, thus I am the strongest and the king of demons. Do you know what happened to them? Old but Yamato no Orochi were loyal to me afterwards, and last I heard, that snake was trying to gain power to challenge me again. Alright, as interesting as that is, I think we should stop the history lesson here and get back to work. Hein, just talking about that snake is making me angry. Come in here and get the contract. Naruto was pulled into his mind, landing in the sewer. First thing I'm doing after modifying the seal is changing this place. Dottie made his way to the cage and found Kaiubi smiling at him. There is one more thing I should warn you about the summoning. The foxes that are summoned are demons, and as such they will be hesitant to listen to you as you are a human. There's a shocker. Any suggestions on how to prove myself to them? Actually, they do take kindly to food, but the older ones will be harder to please. They will want a demonstration of your power. They will demand that you fight the strongest of the clan. Wouldn't that be you? Yes Kit, but for obvious reasons we can't have the match here, so I'll have it moved to our realm. So I get to see hell before I die, wow don't I feel special. Kaiubi chuckled. There was a puff of smoke, and a small scroll appeared in Naruto's hand. You can't sign it here as you need to sign in blood, when you leave, it will go with you, and you must be sure not to let anyone who doesn't have permission to obtain it. I understand, thank you Kaiubi. Dottie left his mindscape and found that the scroll really did come with him. I wonder if I could bring things in there. Couldn't hurt to try. He unrolled the scroll and bit his thumb hard enough to draw blood and sign his name. When he finished, the name glowed red and the kanji turned black. So what's the way to attach them? It's called the monkey fist not dot images of how to tie it flashed through Naruto's head like a movie. He quickly caught on and tied them all to the two ends of the ropes. He lifted one so the two knots were hanging next to each other and spun it above his head, he let it go, and it wrapped around the table leg. Nicely done kit. Thank you, you know, these will come in handy if I have to catch that damn cat again. Kaiubi laughed evilly at the thought. Naruto went back to his new cloak and cut the last strip of cloth into fourths and sewed them on the inside as pockets for his bolas, scrolls, and more kunai and shuriken. Naruto realized that it was dark out already and decided to go to bed. He placed his cloak back on the chair and put the summoning contract with the rest of his precious possessions under a loose floorboard under his bed. He laid down on his bed and couldn't get the image of the girl out of his mind. Just before he fell asleep, one thought crossed his mind. I wish I knew her name. When he woke up he looked at the clock to see that it was quarter to seven. First, I'm actually up on time. Oh well, I might as well head to the bridge now, I might be able to train a bit before they show up. He went to the chair and put on his cloak and put his bolos into the pockets before strapping it closed. He wrapped a rope over his shoulder and tied the tails back to the rope after wrapping it around the covered blade to keep Angelus on his back. He went back into his room and took the summoning contract out and put it in one of his pants pockets. Instead of going out the door, he jumped out the window by his table and leapt across the rooftops. Along the way, he passed training ground 7 where he and his team had taken Kakashi's bell test. He stopped and looked at the three wooden posts that were placed there. As he stood there, he saw Kakashi walking up to the stone that was the memorial for Fallen Ninja. He walked up behind Kakashi, who was sitting in front of the stone. I see that you found another way of concealing your sword, does that mean you don't want to learn about seals? No, I do want to learn about them, but I figured I should get used to the weight of it. It won't do me any good if I can't even pick it up easily. I suppose not, so what did you want, Naruto? Nothing, I was passing by and I saw you, thought I'd say hello. Dotty sat beside Kakashi. So who are you here for? A couple of people, my teammate and Yandame, but mainly my teammate. You remember the line I gave you and the rest of our team. Like I would forget. In the world of the ninja, those who violate rules and laws are called trash. However those who abandon their comrades are worse than trash. My teammate was the one who said that to me. Kakashi chuckled. I'm surprised you memorized it though Naruto. I'm not Kanoha's number one surprising ninja for nothing. Kakashi chuckled some more. I guess not, you even change your outfit. Kind of hard too, my other clothes were ruined after training. Really, what were you doing? Hiding my clones with Itu Kabao, we all had it, and I was up against at least a hundred. You sure love to make simple things complicated. Why did you name the sword Itu Kabao? I'm not really sure, but I think I heard the name being spoken in my head, but I know it's not the fox, because I've heard its voice before. This voice sounded female and didn't have the malicious undertone that it does. I heard a legend about swords that spoke to their wielder. It was said that the swords were bonded to a person and would find their way to them. They were extremely powerful and would lend the wielder their power when they needed it. But this legend is over a thousand years old and there has never been any proof that they existed. I have to go get the mission assignment from the Hokage, it's almost 8 and you should be heading to the bridge. 
Sure thing sensei, I'll see you when you get there. Naruto sat on the railing of the bridge as he waited for his teammates. He heard someone coming up to him and shifted his eyes to see Sasuke. Finally ditched the orange huh? Yeah, even though I wanted to, I didn't have a choice as it was ruined. I overdid it in training yesterday. Still trying to catch up to me? Naruto shrugged. It could help. So what do you think this mission is? Hopefully not that damn cat again. I'm kind of hoping it is. Sasuke looked at him like he was crazy. I think I found an easier way to catch the damn thing without being ripped apart by it. Really, show me. Couldn't hurt, but I need a target. He started to look around, and his smile widened. Well speak of the devil. He pointed, and Sasuke turned to see the cat by the creek that ran under the bridge. Sasuke smirked. This should be interesting. He turned back to Naruto, whose cloak was moving slightly. Naruto brought out his arm with a hinge on the inside to look like he was wearing a black t shirt. In his hand was a red rope with large knots at each end. What the hell is that? Naruto started swinging it above his head, and it became little more than a blur. Suddenly it was gone and there was the sound of something flying through the air. Sasu quickly turned back to look at the cat, and a red blur hit both of its left legs and wrapped around all four, dropping the cat on its side. Naruto chuckles, while heading towards the cat. It worked perfectly, no more running, no more scratching, just caught Dotty picks it up by the back of its neck. If this is a mission, we can head home after Kakashi shows up, if not, maybe we can pick up the payment for it too. Naruto, what did you do? He turned to see Sakura standing not far from the bridge. I caught the damn cat. What was that thing you used? Ebola, it's not normally used in battle, but it works pretty well to catch living things. I have to be sure to gather them up, because I only have a few. There was a pop and Kakashi was on the bridge. Yo. Let me guess, lost on the road of life. No, a black cat crossed your path, or you helped an old lady cross the street. Actually, I was in a meeting with the Hokage about you three. After we finish the mission I'll tell you. What are we doing this time Kakashi? Trying to catch the dynamo's wife's cat. Undati looked at Naruto, who had the cat in his hand, its legs wrapped up. A job. Now, I'm supposed to give you these Dotty handed each a piece of paper. What are they for? I signed you up for the Chunin exams, you don't have to take it, but those who do need to be in room 301 at the academy at 9 tomorrow morning. I'll take the cat and you guys can have the rest of the day off to think about it. Naruto handed the cat to him. Kakashi sensei, I want my bola back, so don't cut it off the cat, just unwrap it. I'll get it back to you later, okay Naruto nodded, and Kakashi vanished in smoke with the cat. Are you guys going to take it? Yes dot I will be able to test my skills against strong opponents, and become strong for it. I'll see you there then, there's no way I'll turn down this opportunity. What about you Sakura? I'm not sure. You heard Kakashi sensei, you don't have to, but if you do, I want you to know that we won't let anything happen to you. Sasuke just grunted and walked away. Trust me, he may act like an idiot, but he won't stand back and watch you get hurt. He placed a hand on her shoulder before walking in the opposite direction of Sasuke while waving. While walking through the streets, Naruto noticed he was being followed by a square rock, again. What do you want Kinohamaru? The kids popped out of the rock. You said you would play ninja with us today. I don't remember that, did I really? They all nodded and he sighed. Fine, but only one game, I have stuff to do today. They all dash off in the same direction, and Naruto smiled, pulling out another two bolas, he caught Mogi and Yudin. Two down and one to go Dottie helped them out of the restraints and took off after Kanohamaru. He saw Kanohamaru run around the corner and heard him run into someone. Hey Brad, watch where you're going. I'm sorry. He will be. Naruto turned the corner to find a blonde Kanoichi with a large fan and a shinobi in black with purple makeup on his face and a mummy looking thing on his back. Ankuro, leave him alone, we have to meet him soon. Shut up Tamari, I'm just going to teach this brat a lesson first. Whatever, I don't want any part of it. Yo makeup wearing guy, put the kid down. Why should I? Three reasons, first is he's the Hokage's grandson. Tamari looked scared, Kankuro looked unimpressed. Second is that if you don't I'll kick you. Ankuro growled and reached with his free hand to the wrap thing on his back, and Naruto's hand went to his sword. Well, what's the third reason? Your teammate doesn't look pleased. Who cares if she is? I meant him. Naruto nods at the tree in the yard next to them, and Kankuro turns slowly to see a red-headed boy with a gourd on his back, standing upside down on a branch. Ankuro, you are a disgrace to our village. But they were the ones. Shut up or I will kill you. Sorry. He let go of Konohamaru, who ran behind Naruto. Sand swirled around the boy and he appeared near his teammates. Since you're a sand ninja, I guess you're here for the Chunin exam. Yes. Who are you? Naruto Uzumaki, and you? Arasabaku. I hope to see you at the exam. I'll be there. Dottie released his grip on his sword as they walked away. Strange people, ha Sasuke looked back at the tree to see Sasuke sitting on the same branch. Should be fun. You do know the Kakashi lied right, we need all of us to enter. 
Sakura will, she does whatever she thinks will get my attention. That and your little speech will give her that final push. I guess, but you better not prove me wrong and let her get the shit kicked out of her. Sasuke dropped out of the tree and walked away. Naruto turned to Konohamaru. Game over, I gotta get going. Say goodbye to Yudan and Mogi for me. Okay boss. Konohamaru ran off and Naruto started to look for a man that scared everyone he met, a supposed Tejutsu master. He wandered around the training grounds for an hour before he heard a loud crash. Naruto picked up his pace and found a boy with black hair and a bowl cut, two large eyebrows and wearing green spandex, crawling out of a large crater. Naruto ran over to him. Hey are you okay? The boy smiled. Yes, thank you for your concern. What happened? I was trying to perfect the new Tejutsu technique that Guy sensei was teaching me. It's called the Primary Lotus. Sorry, I forgot to ask your name. It is common courtesy to give your name first. Really? I've never heard that before. Naruto shrugged. I'm Naruto Uzumaki. He extended his hand, which the boy shook. I am Rock Lee. It's a pleasure to meet you, Naruto. The pleasure is mine, Lee. I was actually looking for Guy, do you know where he is? I believe he is with my teammates, come I will take you. Naruto followed Lee through some dense trees. His ear picked up something moving through the trees. Lee stopped here and in front of Lee and pulled his still covered sword. He grabbed the rope and started spinning the whole sword in front of them at a fast rate. The sound of metal hitting metal rang out through the forest as the projectiles fell to the ground. Naruto didn't let up until the only sound was his sword whirling in the air. He slowed the spin and grabbed the handle. He looked at the weapons, they were kunai, shuriken, and needles. Lee stepped forward smiling. Ah Tenten, your aim is perfect as always. The girl with buns in her hair and a Chinese-like dress come out of the bushes in front of them. Lee. Who's this with you? This is Naruto, he's looking for Guy Sensei. Tenten looked at Naruto with a look that clearly said are you insane? Before looking back at Lee. Lee, you know better than to come through here, Niji saw you, and we figured someone was trying to spy on our training. You remember what happened last time? Yes, and I was most fortunate that you weren't trying to be horribly injured. She shook her head and took in Naruto's appearance, he still had his sword in hand. I'm impressed you can handle a sword like that, you weren't hit once. To tell the truth, I was really sure if I would stop them all. It was the first time I've tried something like that. It was pretty good. He got down on a knee and picked up the weapons. He handed them to her. Thank you. No problem. He strapped it to Kabao on his back again with the rope. You must really enjoy using weapons, I couldn't see very far through these trees, but your aim was incredible. Tenten smiled. Come on, Guy sensei is just up ahead. She led them out into an opening where a boy with long brown hair, white pupil-less eyes, and white clothes, and an older version of Lee with a vest, were waiting. Ali, who is your youthful friend? This is Naruto, he was looking for you Guy sensei Naruto, have you come to learn about the power of youth? Actually, I think Kakashi sensei said something about that. So you are on my rival's team. Unfortunately, he's always late, while making lame excuses about why, and reading that perverted book of his. I see, so why have you searched me out Naruto? I was wondering if you knew where I could get some training weights. You are in luck, I have two sets as neither Tenten or Niji wanted them. Did I get them both all four of them looked at him in shock, though you couldn't really tell with Niji. You have such youthfulness, it rivals that of my own and Lee's. With both sets, you will have half of what Lee's wearing now. Uh, thank you. Guy placed a box in front of him, and he took out the bands of weight, one at a time and put them on, one on each leg and arm. He had a hard time moving at first, but slowly got used to the new weight. I and Lee were ranting on about the power of youth, and Tenten was glaring holes through Naruto, since he was the one that had started them at it. So Lee, how has your progress with the primary lotus gone? I have finished Guy Sensei. Very good Lee. I now forbid it from being used. But Guy Sensei, Lee it stopped Lee from saying another word. The only time you are allowed to use it is if someone precious to you is in danger. I understand Guy sensei Good. Naruto stood near them, by the edge of the clearing. Someone precious. I turned to him and saw the saddened expression. Is something wrong with Naruto? In our mission to the Land of Waves, I met a boy named Haku, who said that when you fight to protect someone precious to you, you will become as strong as you need to be. The next day, I found out that he was one of our enemies, and he died to protect his partner, Zabuza, who didn't even seem to care about Haku. Zabuza killed his employer by insulting Haku. Since that battle, I have been trying to figure out what makes a person precious. I carry Zabuza's sword, though it's not the same anymore. It changed when I cut my hand on the blade and made a promise to them. Lee and Guy were in tears, Niji looked bored, and Tenten was shocked. Such a sad story of the loss of youthfulness. Naruto, could I see the blade? Shuridadi pulled his sword again and flicked the clasp. The leather strip fell to the ground and the cloth went with it. She smiled. It's an impressive blade, Naruto, what's its name? Itukabao. Please don't ask me why, it's complicated. She nodded. 
Here he wraps the blade and puts it on his back again. Naruto, I will tell you what I believe makes a precious person if you like. Naruto looked at Guy with a smile and nodded. A precious person is someone who you would do anything to protect, even give your own life. Thanks Guy, for everything. You're welcome, even if you are my rival student, I will do everything in my power to fan the flames of youth. Dai Sensei. Lee. Dai Sensei. Lee. They hug and the background changes to a cliff overlooking the sea, with waves crashing against the side. Naruto tries to dispel it, thinking it's a dot. Don't waste your time, it won't work, we've tried. Are you guys entering the Chunin exam? Yeah, Guy Sensei had us skip a year to prepare. Kakashi probably signed you guys up because of the Ichiharite. Most likely, but I don't care. I'll get my chance to show the nonsense this time. Good luck. You guys too, I guess I'll see you tomorrow then, provided my third teammate shows. I'm pretty sure that Lee would be devastated if he didn't get a chance to fight you. Well if she doesn't show, I'll see if he wants to spar some other time. I wouldn't say that too loudly, or he'll challenge you. Good point. See you later you guys. Dottie waved to them and walked off down a dirt path. He trained a training ground 7 until dark and headed home. He flopped down on his bed when he got there, after removing his sword and cloak. Kaiubi, does time pass differently in hell like when I visit you there? I'm not sure kid, time doesn't really apply to me, I'm immortal after all. Well, I really hope so, or I'm going to have to set aside a week or so for my test. You still might have to, I won't go down easily. Trust me, I know, but neither will I besides, you never said I had to win, just to show them my power. Seems I misjudged you kid, you shouldn't hide who you really are. Have you sensed anything from the girl? No I don't have it. She must be used to suppressing her chakra. Thanks Kaiubi, good night. Good night kid. Naruto fell asleep soon after. When Naruto woke up the next morning, he went through his normal routine and started to get ready, but he couldn't find his weights. He tore apart his bedroom trying to find it, he looked at his clock and saw that it was just after 8. Damn it, where are they? I believe you're still wearing them. Naruto looked down and saw it was true. How can I move so easily? I've only been wearing them for half a day. You tear your muscles and when those tears heal, you become stronger. Since I increase your healing rate, the tears heal faster and you keep ripping your muscles so you get stronger faster. So I get stronger faster with less work. Then what's the point of working for anything? It's too much like Sasuke for comfort. I agree with Kit, but it's a perk of being my vessel. Work as hard as you want and you'll get twice the normal results. You should get it ready Kit, you don't have much time before the exam. He looked at the clock again and it was almost 8.30. Shitty put on his cloak and attached his sword as he ran out the door. Naruto arrives at the academy panting and Sasuke's already there. You're early. What's next, Kakashi not reading his book. What are you talking about, it's almost 9. I don't know where you got that idea, but it's 5 after 8. He showed Naruto his watch and said what it said. Huh, I guess my clock is an hour fast. So why are you here so early? I've been up for a few hours, I couldn't sleep. So you're actually excited about this then. You could put it that way, I want to test my abilities against strong opponents like Gara from yesterday. There are some guys you should watch out for from here too, like me. I just might surprise you. You think she'll show Sasuke shrug. I hope so, there's two other people other than you that I want to fight. Really, who? That Gara and a guy I might have met yesterday are Ok Lee. Is he any good? Not really sure, he wears weights and when I found him yesterday, he was crawling out of a huge crater he made. Sasuke just gave a huh and watched as other genin from several villages entered the building. Naruto was sitting against the building when he saw Sasuke smirk. Naruto looked and saw Sakura running towards them. I was starting to wonder if you were going to come. I can't leave the two of you alone, you'd end up trying to kill each other. Who's trying? The dope wouldn't stand a chance. So let's go in, we have to be at room 301 by 9. They went in and on the second floor, they saw a mob of people trying to get into a room labeled 301. Sasuke walked over to where two genin blocked the path. Take off and get out of the way. One of them smiled. So you noticed, but you'll have to get past us to continue on. He tried to kick, but was stopped by a green blur. That's enough. Hey Lee, nice block. Lee looked at the group he jumped in front of. Ah Naruto, it's good to see you. Tenton and Niji come over, Tenton shaking her head. Naruto pointed at Lee. Backquote G-U-Y-S, this is Rock Lee, his teammates Tenten, whose family name I never asked, and Niji Hayuga, the rookie of the year from last year. He moved his finger as he talked. He then pointed at Sasuke. This is the stuck-up nonsense Sasuke Chia. Oh dot Sakura hit him on the back of the head. And the abuse of Sakura Hirono dot his comment earned him another blow to the head. Lee's eyes turned to hearts when he looked at her. What a beautiful blossom, I will protect you with my life. Would you be my girlfriend? My lovely Sakura Naruto was trying to not laugh as Sakura inches away saying she loved Sasuke. Sasuke, I challenge you. Alright. Tenten looked worried. Lee, I don't think you should be doing this, we could get in trouble. 
let him, if nothing else, we get to learn about a possible opponent. Lee rushed towards Sasuke at incredible speeds, so much so that Sasuke was forced to turn on the Sharingan just to get a glimpse. Lee suddenly appeared on his hands and one leg, kicking Sasuke in the chin with the other and sending him into the air. Lee appeared again behind Sasuke, but before he could do anything, Guy had a hold of Sasuke and Lee was decked out on the floor. Lee, I told you not to use that technique. I'm sorry Guy Sensei, I was caught up in trying to prove myself. There is a time and a place for such things. He set Sasuke down as Naruto walked over to him. Ah Naruto, how does this youthful day find you? But Guy, I have a question for you though, the weights you gave me, are they metal plate weights or something else? So you already need to add more, you do indeed rival Lee and myself. The weights are made of a special material that when you try to put chakra into them, they gain weight. They don't actually absorb the chakra though, so you could put a very large amount in, but it is unwise as the pressure could crush you. I should also warn you that you can only increase the weight, you'll have to take them off to feel the results of your training. Thanks, guy. Not a problem Naruto, may your flames of youth burn brightly in the exam. Guy gave him his good guy pose, and everyone sweat dropped except Lee who was doing one as well. Everyone started up the stairs to the third floor, Naruto was supporting Sasuke. You just had to open your mouth didn't you? You said you want to fight the strongest, but you saved quite a few of the weaker teams back there. Sasuke just groaned as Kakashi came into view. What happened to him? He and Lee had a short match before Guy stopped them. He just nodded. Well good luck on the exam. Sakura was curious. Why are you here sensei? Simple, if you didn't all show up, I was supposed to turn the others away. Good luck. He handed Naruto his bowl and vanished in a puff of smoke. Naruto kicked in the door as his hands were full and could feel the killing intent come from the room. He just shrugged it off and propped Sasuke against the wall. Sasuke blonde girl grabbed onto him. That off of him he no pig. Troublesome girls. Naruto turned his hand to find Shikamaru and Choji, who was munching on a bag of chips. Looks like all of the rookies are here. Kiba and his team came walking up to them, Hinata poking her fingers together. Naruto was glancing around. There it is again, who's using this it's really strong for a genin. A guy with silver hair and glasses came up to them, he was wearing a leaf headband. Since I can see it's your first time, I have some advice for you, shut the hell up. Who the hell are you? My name is Caputo. I've taken this exam seven times already, two every year. You must really suck. Maybe, but I gather information on the other applicants, I'll share it with you. Dottie pulled out a deck of cards. What's with the cards? I store my information on them, so who would you like to know about? Ara from Suna and Rock Lee from Kanoha. You know their names, that makes it easier. Let's see, ah here we are. Gara Sabaku, 0D, 0C, 15B and 7A, 1S missions, not much else is known about him, except that it's rumored that he's returned from every mission without a scratch. Naruto glanced over at the red-headed boy, who just looked back. Rock Lee, a year older than you, 37D, 4C, 1B, 0A, 0S missions, has high marks in Tejutsu, but pathetic marks in Ninjutsu and Dot. He still would have beaten Sasuke if Guy hadn't stepped in, that move he was about to use left a huge crater the last time he used it. You guys should be careful, there are ninja from Suna, Aim, Tombo, Kusa, Kiri, and even Odo sent some. What do you mean even Odo? Their new village, still kind of small, normally they would wait a few years and send more than just one team. A man almost completely wrapped in bandages, took a swing at Kabuto, he dodged but fell to the ground, blood running out of his ears. There was a loud popping and several people were at the front of the room. The one standing in front of the others was wearing a trench coat and had scars on his face. There will be no fighting unless you are told to do so. The mummy man bowed. My apologies, but I do not take lightly the insult of my village. I don't give a hell why, don't do it again or you will be thrown out. Now listen up, the ones behind me will tell you where to sit when they were all sitting, the ones who had stood behind the scarred man sat around the room. I'm Ibiki Marino, the first part of this exam is a written test. There are 10 questions, but only 9 on the sheet in front of you. 45 minutes after you start, the 10th question will be given. The rules are simple, you start off with 10 points, 1 point is deducted for every wrong answer, 2 if you're caught cheating, if you get caught 5 times you and your team fail and are kicked out immediately. The proctors around the room will be watching to see if you cheat. You're 45 minutes from now. Naruto was a bit nervous, as he was never any good at written tests. He flipped the paper over and read the questions slowly. Kit, there's no way that a normal genin would know the answers to these. Then what are we supposed to do, if we cheat, we could get kicked out. Wadey said if we were caught, he wants us to cheat. Very good kid, but you don't need to, I know the answers, just write down exactly what I say. He picked up his pencil and started scribbling down what Kaiubi told him. Hinata was sitting next to him and saw how he blew through the questions, only taking a few seconds to read them. 
This girl is smart, cheating off of you is a good idea, but because of your reputation, no one else will. Naruto was just finishing the last question when Kayubi said it, but was smart enough not to write that too. Can you sense where this is coming from? Not the exact source, but I know it's very close, within two rows from you. Naruto just leaned back in his chair, leaving his paper open for looks. Ibiki saw this and smiled, thinking that he had given up. Sasuke used his Sharingan, Niji used his Byakugan, Sakura was just a bookworm, Ino used her family to take over Sakura's body and give the information to Shikamaru and Choji, Shino used his bugs, Kiba used Akamaru, Tenten and Lee used small mirrors hanging from the ceiling, Gara used his third eye to turn his sand into an eye that he could see out of, and Kankuru used Karasu to gather the answers and pass them to Tamari. Several teams were kicked out and after 45 minutes, Ibiki stood up and addressed them. It's time for the 10th question, but before I tell you, you have to decide if you want to take it or not. Why wouldn't we? If you take it and get it wrong, your team fails, and none of you will ever be able to become one dot. If you don't take it, your team fails, but you can take the next one. There are lots of people who have taken the exam before. I wasn't in charge before, too bad for you. If you decide not to take it, raise your hand and one of the proctors will take down your name, and those of your teammates. People all around the room were raising their hands. Ibiki looked at the boy he thought had given up, but he just sat there with a smile looking around too. The pink-haired girl was about to raise her hand after a look towards the blonde boy, but he saw it and raised his first. Before the proctor's pen reached the clipboard, he slammed his hand on the desk. I won't run so just give us the question. The others, including some of those from foreign villages, took courage from his words, and no one else raised their hands. Those who have decided to take the tenth question, you all pass. What the hell was the point of the test then? The first nine were to test your information gathering skills, there were with all the answers among you for that purpose. The tenth was to see if you were willing to face even a lose-lose situation to finish a mission. He pulled off his bandana revealing more scars. In the field, misinformation can be worse than no information at all. He replaced the bandana. The second exam will be a black object impacted the wall and a banner opened across the room. It said the second proctor, Anko Midarashi. There was a puff of smoke and a woman in a trench coat, purple miniskirt, fishnet, and boots, with brown pupil-less eyes and violet hair. You're early again Anko. She didn't pay attention as she counted the remaining students. 26. You must be getting soft if you let 26 teams pass. They're really good this year. I cut that number in half. Alright you little shits, follow me to the location of the second part of the exam she jumped out of the hole created by her sign, and the more experienced Jenin followed her, while the other went through the door. Ibiki collected the tests and looked at Naruto's when he got to it. He was shocked that every question was answered perfectly. How could he have answered them all so fast? What an interesting kid. A genin stood outside a large, enclosed, forest. Welcome to training area 44, also known as the forest of death. Doesn't look that bad. Almost every creature and plant in there is enormous, poisonous, or deadly in another way, sometimes even all three. Most of the genin paled at this, but Naruto looked bored. Something flew by him and grazed his cheek. In an instant, Anko was holding him from behind and licked the cut. You don't taste too bad, kid, but I can tell you're afraid. Who wouldn't be, I have a crazed Kanoichi on me, and am surrounded by people who would just as soon kill me as talk to me. Anko smirked at his reply, but Drew Kunai as a long tongue came into view. I believe this is yours. The tongue was wrapped around another Kunai. Thank you. Anko took the Kunai and the tongue went back into the Kusaninja's mouth, who smiled and walked away. Now listen up, the rules for this portion of the exam is that you have 5 days to reach the tower in the center, while trying to survive each other and other obstacles. Each team will be given either a heaven or an earth scroll, and need both when they reach the tower. You cannot look in the scrolls, and your team must all reach the tower alive. Now sign these forms and when you have, hand them to one of them by the fence and get your team's scroll. What are the forms for? Since killing is allowed, you have to sign these forms to continue so in the event you do die there, Kanoha is not held responsible as you knew what you were getting into. If one member of the team doesn't sign it, the others can't continue either. Everyone signed, and they got their scrolls, Naruto's team got the heaven scroll. They waited at their assigned gate until it opened then they shot off into the forest. After half an hour of running, they stopped because Naruto had to go to the bathroom. A Kiri ninja snuck up on him, but a clone bashed him with Angelus from behind, knocking him out. Can't I even get some privacy he finished and walked to his clone. Anything on him. No scroll, but he had a few weapons and explosive, tags. The clone handed the spoils to him and disappeared. He stuffed them into his pockets and went back to his team. They were discussing something, but when they saw him, they told him to stop. Prove that you're who you say you are. How? What were the names of the family we protected in Wave? Azuna, Tsunami, and Inari, from Gato, Zabuza, and Haku. Happy. Sorry, but we're up against ninjas and they could disguise themselves. 
we've decided to use a password to identify each other. Why don't we use the line Kakashi Sensei told us after the bell test? It would only work once, but we shouldn't really try to separate. They nodded and were off again. As they ran, a tremendous wind ripped through the area and tore trees from the ground. Sasuke used his chakra to stick to the ground and was grabbed by Sakura, but Naruto was blown away. It was with a sickening crack that a large tree stopped him. He fell to the branch below and laid there a few moments before slowly standing back up. What the hell was that there was a crushing sound behind him, and he turned just in time to see a giant snake swallow him. The Kusa ninja from earlier appeared in front of Sasuke and Sakura, putting out a lot of killing intent, causing them to freeze in place. I'm disappointed Sasuke, I came to see what the youngest Ichiha was capable of, and you coward. While Sasuke and Sakura were under the pressure of his killing intent, they saw themselves being killed over and over by him. Sasuke heard Sakura scream and was brought back to reality, but was still shaken. Sasuke pulled out a kunai and stabbed himself in the leg, and used the pain to snap himself out of it. His Sharingan blazed to life and he rushed the ninja, he was thrown into the air. He flipped in mid-air and threw several shuriken, which the Kusa ninja dodged. The ninja ran up the tree and started to attack Sasuke in the air. Sasuke managed to surprise his enemy and wrap his legs around the man's chest, locking his arm in place and his arms around the man's legs. The man's head was smashed into a branch about 20 feet below them, Sasuke jumped up above him and started making hand signs. Ryuka no Jutsu a dragon made a flame shot from Sasuke's mouth towards the man, destroying the branch. Sasuke nearly collapsed from exhaustion when he heard laughing. Nicely done Sasuke, had I not been prepared, you may have killed me. Sasuke looked at the man, the skin on his face was ripped, revealing pale skin underneath it, and a golden eye with a slip pupil with purple lines around the eye. Come Sasuke, entertain me. Naruto was pissed, no matter what he tried, he couldn't seem to get out. His sword had stuck into the beast, but he couldn't cut himself out. A wide smile appeared on his face, and he made a cross using his index and middle fingers. Cage Bunch and No Jutsu the clones continued to appear until the snake's body exploded and it rained Naruto's. He dispelled them and started back toward where his team last was. When he found them, he saw Sasuke throw their scroll to the enemy. He rushed forward and grabbed it out of the air. What the hell are you doing Sasuke? Naruto, he's too powerful, he'll kill us. And what do you think will happen if we give him the scroll that he'll let us walk away? So it's you again. The Kusa ninja started pumping out more killing intent, causing Sasuke to shake, but Naruto just glared at the man. Do you not fear death? Why should I? Death will come to everyone, whether from old age or war. The man laughed. Then let's see what you can do. There was a puff of smoke, and a large snake appeared. Another snake? He must have sent the last one too, that nonsense. Naruto pulled out his sword and released the cloth. Taking the handle in one hand the rope in the other. I killed you last snake, and this one will meet the same fate. He threw the rope over his right arm, and it wrapped around it. He took the sword in both hands and charged the snake, blocking its bites with his blade. He cut the beast's throat and it disappeared like a clone, only to have another appear and charge the still shaking Sasuke. Kaiubi, I'm gonna need your help with this. I can't give you much kit, your body can't handle much of my power yet. Anything will be helpful. He felt the surge of raw power and sped off to where Sasuke was. The instant the snake bit down, Naruto's sword was stabbed into the front of its snout. You're not hurt are you, scaredy cat Sasuke stopped shaking and looked at Naruto. The ninja's tongue wrapped around Naruto's neck but was unable to move him. Is he using chakra to stay in place? He yelled in pain as his tongue was cut. Keep your tongue off me you sick nonsense, I don't go for guys. The man looked down at Naruto and saw the red eyes with cat-like pupils. A smile appeared on his face. So the Kaiubi brat still lives, this changes everything. The man reaches up and pulls out the torn skin, showing that it was something like a mask. I'm Orochimaru the snake Sanin. I know who you are, only two people in history have used snakes, and one is the proctor of this part of the exam. Naruto was on top of the snake in seconds. Unfortunately for you, we don't like snakes. Naruto brought his sword down in an angled slice and cut him in half, but the body turned to dirt. A mud clone he looked around to find the snake Sanin, but by the time he found him, it was too late. Orochimaru's fingertips were engulfed in purple flames, and he slammed them into Naruto's stomach, over top of Kaiubi's seal. Gajo Fuin. What a pity, if it weren't for your tenant, I would give you a curse seal as well. You may have a use later, but for now I need you out of the way. Pain coursed through Naruto's body, and he fell unconscious. Orochimaru tried to throw him, but still couldn't move him. You disappoint me Sasuke, but I'm still going to leave you a parting gift. His neck stretched out and he bit into the back of Sasuke's neck. Near the bite, a circle of three appeared as Sasuke also fell unconscious. You'll seek me out, and when you do, I'll give you the power you seek. After he left, the effects of the killing intent wore off, and Sakura was able to move again. Naruto woke up with a splitting headache, something hard was sticking into his back, but the rest of his body was on something fairly soft. 
He opened his eyes and quickly moved his hand to block the sunlight. What the hell was that Kyubi? There was no reply. Kyubi. Kyubi, can you hear me? Again there was no response. He was about to enter his mindscape when Sakura came into view, panting and muddied. What happened to you? I moved Sasu to a place not so open and I came back to get you. Seeing as how you're awake, I wouldn't have to move you. Thanks, what happened after I was knocked out? That man did something to Sasuke. It looked like he bit Sasuke, and now there is this weird mark on Sasuke's shoulder, he left after that. When we get out of here, we have to get someone to take a look at it, who knows what it is. By the way, did you happen to hear what he used on me? No, but I remember seeing purple flames on the tips of his fingers. So do I. We need to get back to Sasuke, lead the way. She nodded and started back the way she came. By the time they reached the tree where Sasuke was hidden, the sun was setting. Sakura, get some rest, you earned it. I'll keep watch and set up some defenses tonight. With any luck, he'll be up by tomorrow, if not we'll have to stay here until he wakes up. Why can't we carry him? We could, but if we did, we would be easy targets. I normally would make some shadow clones to help, but whatever that guy hit me with is messing with my chakra control, and I don't have the time to try and get it back to normal right now. I can probably make half the amount I would normally with the same amount of chakra. We have four days left to find the earth scroll and get to the tower, even with my clones, we wouldn't be able to do both while carrying Sasuke. But if we don't move, we won't be able to anyway. If we wait, we'll have to do both in three days or less. I'm going to try and find the other scroll tomorrow afternoon, after I get some sleep. My chakra control may be on the fritz, but my physical strength is fine. Sakura, could you do something for me? What? He put up a quick hinge and pulled his arms from under his cloak. Since my control sucks, I need you to push some chakra into both of these and the one on my legs. Aren't these weights? Yeah, from what I was told, pushing chakra into them makes them weigh more, but they don't absorb the chakra, so you'll still have it. The reason I'm asking is because once they increase in weight, you can't lower it so if I were to do it, chances are that I would put way too much in and have to more or less crawl to the tower. So, will you do it? I don't see why not, lay down and keep your arms out. Dottie did as he was told and she started, doubling the weight on each limb. That's good. Yeah, thanks Sakura. Get some rest, you'll need it tomorrow whether we move or not. Dottie slowly got up and moved out from under the tree's roots. He started laying traps around the clearing, most were well hidden, but one he made it so obvious it was painful for him, it saving grace was that it was only a trigger for the most painful and possibly cruelest trap he made. I have to tell Sakura to scare off any animals that try to walk over it, I wouldn't want it to go off prematurely. A sadistic gleam appeared in his eye. Naruto walked back under the roots, moving slowly still. A smile appeared on his face when he saw Sakura laying next to Sasuke, a smile on her face and his arm around her, put there by her obviously as her hand was around his wrist. He walked over and moved her hand onto Sasuke's chest, but left Sasuke's arm where she put it. Smiling evilly, he rummaged through his pockets. He was whispering to himself. I knew it was a good idea to bring it, but where did I put it? Ah, there it is. Dottie pulled his arms out again and had a camera in his hands. Tuckling, he raised the camera and took a picture of the two. How embarrassed they'll be when everyone sees this. The fangirls are going to be pissed, Kakashi is going to love this, and Sakura will probably have it blown up and hanging in her room. Dottie put the camera back and sat down. He made a cross using his index and middle fingers. Cage bunch and no jutsu. Five clones popped into existence. Spread out and keep watch. I have to check something. The clones nodded and ran off. He closed his eyes and entered his mindscape, moving quickly through the sewer, he found Kaiubi's cell. The sight shocked him. Instead of the normal bars, the spot where Naruto knew Kaiubi was sealed, there was a brick wall jutting out of the wall. The nonsense held up my chakra control and cut me off from Kaiubi. I'm going to rip the hellers throat out he walked up to the wall and placed a hand on it, it glowed blue for a second. Kaiubi, if you can hear me, I will find a way to get rid of this damn thing. The wall glowed red and a weak voice came from behind it. He called it Gaju Fuin Kit, it's another seal. Your control is held up because he placed an odd numbered one on top of an even. He must have known about me to hit the seal so accurately. He is one of the Sanin, he became a missing nin shortly after Yandane took over, probably left someone who reported to him. I would think it was Anko, but from what I heard if you even mention his name around her she flips out and tries to kill you. On a happier note, my teammates are sleeping together, nothing romantic, but in each other's arms only slightly helped. I just moved Sakura's arm to his chest, other than that it was her. He heard a weak laugh. I hope you remembered the camera. Am right I did, I plan to make copies to hand out, and when I alter the seal, it's going on the wall, just so you have something to laugh at besides me. Thanks for the thought, but if you do, make sure you can take it down, sooner or later, it won't be as funny. Sorry to cut this short Kaiubi, but I'm supposed to be on guard duty. 
I promise though, I will find a way to get rid of this wall. I know you will dot with that, Naruto returned to the conscious world, his clones were still there, moving around the clearing, keeping watch while avoiding the traps. He made a hand sign and they disappeared with another pop. Naruto woke Sakura shortly after sunrise and told her of the traps he placed. Above all else, he impressed how important the one in front of the tree was to not be set off by anything but an enemy. He didn't tell her what it did, but she said she understood and didn't ask. She woke him up at 10, like he asked her to and told him to be careful. Around noon, he came across a clearing that was almost completely covered in blood. The smell more than the sight caused Naruto to puke. Pinching his nose, he dropped into the clearing and looked for any clues as to what happened. Near the edge of the blood, he found a bare spot, like something had intercepted it, something that was no longer there. In that spot, he found that the ground was lightly covered in grains of sand. Gara and his team were the only Suna ninja to pass the first test. Question is did they kill another team or were they the ones killed? I guess I'll find out later Dottie jumped into the trees and started off again. Not even 10 minutes later, he stopped by a steam to drink. As soon as he landed something rustled behind him, quickly pulling out a kunai he turned towards the noise. Out of the forest came Kibble with a shaking Akamaru in his coat. He spotted Naruto and went into a defensive position. What are you doing here, and where's your team? We split up to find the other scroll, and I was trying to get a drink when you came up behind me. He put the kunai away and went over to the stream. He got down on one knee and drank the water from his cupped hands. Kiba, a bit of advice, don't head directly towards the tower, there's a clearing where a slaughter occurred. The Suna team was involved. I know, my team saw the whole thing. That redhead is insane, after he killed those aim ninja, it looked like he was going to turn on his own team. He didn't even know what scroll the aim team had, he just wanted to kill them. They did have the scroll he needed, his team passed yesterday. Akamaru hasn't stopped shaking from the power he sensed from this guy. You should stay clear of him. I keep that in mind. Try not to kill Kiba. Naruto waved and jumped back into the trees and sped off downstream. He soon became surrounded by the Kiri ninja that had attacked him the day before and his team. Brought friends this time huh, well at least I know one of you has the scroll, you wouldn't just leave it somewhere someone could find it. He took it to Kabao off his back and flicked the clasp, causing the straps and cloth to fall to the ground. The three Miss Ninja used the water from the stream to make Mizubunshin to completely surround Naruto, said Blonde just smirked. Grabbing the end of the rope, Naruto started spinning, the sword's reach still couldn't touch the enemies, who were laughing. You won't be able to keep that up for long and it was a waste, you can't even touch us. Just as he finished speaking, the sound of water splashing to the ground was heard as the clones across from him were destroyed. He must have moved, he still can't hit them all. He was proven wrong as one of the real ninjas was hit, sending him into a tree and knocking him out. The other two jumped back as the sword passed through the remaining clones. Slowly the spinning stopped, leaving a dizzy Naruto stand with his sword stabbed into the ground to balance himself. The two Miss Ninja used this opening and charged forward, a kunai in each hand. Naruto made a quick seal, and five cage bunshin appeared between him and them. The clones didn't last long, but long enough for Naruto to recover. Gripping the large sword in both hands, Naruto charged towards the one who attacked him. He swung over his head, but was blocked by the two kunai. The second ninja came up from the side and attempted to stab Naruto, but was hit in the gut by Naruto's knee. The blocking ninja used this to his advantage and pushed Naruto's blow towards his teammate, causing Naruto to become unbalanced and nearly fall onto the waiting kunai. Luckily for him, he had kneed the ninja hard enough that the kunai fell from his hands, so instead he just fell onto the ninja, both falling to the ground. Naruto rolled to the side as the last Miss Ninja standing drove a kunai down towards him. Naruto brought up his sword and used the broadside to stop the kunai. Naruto took a quick look around and saw two major things, one the ninja he had landed on was getting up, and the other was where the attacking ninja was standing. He smirked and swiftly lifted his leg, kicking the offending ninja in the groin. Needless to say, the man fell to the ground and held the area in the fetal position, the kunai lying forgotten on the ground. Naruto quickly got to his feet and hit the man on the head with the broad side of his sword, knocking him out. The last conscious member of their team looked at his teammate with pity. He noticed that Naruto was slowly approaching him, sword in hand. The Miss Ninja dropped to his knees. I surrender, take our scroll. I don't want to end up like that poor nonsense. Naruto stopped in front of him and held out his hand, the Miss Ninja placed the scroll in his hand and went to help his teammates. Naruto looked at the scroll and sighed. Another heaven scroll, oh well, I should probably head back now. He turned to go when he felt the earth tremble. He smiled and sped off. Sakura kept watch from under the roots of the trees for hours and checked on Sasuke when she got the chance. Right now wasn't one of those times, she heard something moving in the forest. When a squirrel ran out, she was relieved until it headed for the only trap Naruto wouldn't tell her about. She threw a kunai and scared the squirrel back into the forest, unaware of the six people watching. 
Bree were battered and burned, watching from behind a fallen tree. This is so troublesome, why are we going after Sakura's team? Sasuke and Naruto can easily beat us. Shikamaru's right Eno, we'd have better luck fighting Kiba's group. I thought you were supposed to be the smart one, you lazy nonsense. Look, Sasuke's out and Naruto isn't even here, the three of us can take down Forehead Girl, and we already saw that she has the scroll, and it's the one we need. It's an easy win for us. As they were arguing, the three sound ninjas stepped into the clearing. What did I tell you Kin, those other traps couldn't have possibly been made by this group, those were complex and well hidden he pointed at the ground. This is pathetic. The man wrapped up like a mummy stepped forward. Girl, we came for Sasuke, wake him up and we might let you live. You're not getting Sasuke the mummy man laughed and stepped forward. Your trap is easily seen, this soil is upturned and there is no grass growing on it. He stuck his hand into the soil and was poked by something sharp. His visible eye widened, and as he pulled his arm out, there was a muffled explosion, and the earth shook from the explosion, and the hundreds of kunai that shot from the ground, going in every direction except toward Sakura and Sasuke. The three sound ninja were turned into nothing less than pincushions, while Lino's team was only saved because they ducked behind the fallen tree. Sakura was in shock as the three ninja fell to the ground. What the hell is wrong with Naruto? Behind the fallen tree Shikamaru was as close to pissed as he could get. You still think it's a good idea to fight? Shut it Shikamaru. Let's go, there can't possibly be any more traps, or that would have set them off. If you're so sure, you won't mind going first. Why me, you're a man aren't you? Yeah, but I'm not suicidal. Better to live as a coward than die as a fool. Naruto moved through the trees over them and stopped just above them. Poor nonsense, shouldn't judge everything, but how they looked Adi looked down to see them staring up. Did you get here before or after the trap went off he studied them closely. By your expression, I'd say before. Come on, I'll tell you if there are any traps, I'm sure Ino wants to go see Sasuke. They followed Naruto to the tree roots, once there he stepped aside and they rushed in, but he wasn't able to sidestep the punch Sakura sent towards him. He went crashing to the ground. What the hell is wrong with you? That trap was barbaric at best. It worked didn't it? I didn't mean it was crude, I meant it was inhuman, it was designed to kill everything around. Not everything, none came this way did they? Besides, I took into account clones, and I don't think you'd be complaining if it were that snake freak who attacked us, yesterday Dotty stood up and turned his back on them. I'm going to see what scroll they have. Dot he searched the bodies and found the earth scroll in a pouch on the mummy man that was on the back of his pants, so it wasn't pierced, but any kunai. He came back and looked at Eno's team. What scroll do you need? A heaven. So that's why you were here, well luckily for you, they had a earth scroll, and I acquired a second heaven scroll. Dotty pulled out the heaven scroll he had and tossed it to them as an apology for nearly killing you along with them. Even if you were planning on attacking, we're still comrades as ninjas of Konoha. Well said Naruto, Gai-sensei would be proud of your youthfulness. Naruto turned with a smile. Hey Lee, what brings you here? The explosion that shook the forest, my team and I felt it and I volunteered to check it out. It was a trap that I set up to protect my teammates while I was away. Then I should have gotten here sooner, to protect the lovely Sakura. Ino was snickering, while Sakura was shaking. Well Lee, you still might be able to Dottie looked at Sasuke, and everyone else looked too. Black marks were slowly spreading down his arm and across his face. Lee, I might need your help when he wakes up. I thought we wanted him to wake up. Sakura, I'm almost certain that whatever that snake freak did to him is causing this. Until we get it looked at, I think it would be better to keep him unconscious, or at least till it subsides. Shikamaru, if I can keep him still, do you think you can hold him with your shadow long enough for Lee or I to knock him out? I won't be able to hold him for more than a few minutes, but I think that should be long enough. I want you five to go to the edge of the clearing, I don't know how he'll react. They nodded and left. Purple visible chakra erupted from Sasuke, and the marks started to glow red. His eyes shot open and he stood. This power is incredible, with this power I can kill my brother. He looked straight at Naruto. Fight me. I was hoping you would ask, but there's not much room, let's take this outside. He walked out into the clearing with little concern about having an unpredictable Sasuke following him. Sasuke stopped just outside the roots, and Naruto went over to the others, setting down his sword, he whispered to Shikamaru. How close does he have to be? With all these shadows, about 10 feet from where he is now. Got it, go as soon as he's in range. Naruto started back toward Sasuke and stopped at the edge of what used to be his trap. Ready when you are. Without a moment's hesitation, they both started making hand signs, mirroring the other. Katen. Hausenka no Jutsu five balls of fire shot from each and collided, but the shuriken that Sasuke had hidden in his kept going. Naruto swiftly drew a kunai and deflected them away from himself, without sending them towards the five other leaf ninja. While Naruto was busy with the shuriken, Sasuke disappeared only to reappear behind Naruto as he knocked away the last shuriken. Not bad dope, but you still have no chance to beat me now that I have this power. 
Naruto looked over his shoulder and he smiled. Is that right? Then go ahead and try. Sasuke was smirking. Fine Dottie tried to raise his arm, but it wouldn't move. Why can't I move? Naruto walked around Sasuke. Sorry Sasuke, that thing is acting up, and until it stopped or at least checked out, I can't risk you flipping out and attacking us. Dottie hit Sasuke in the back of the neck with a chop, and Sasuke fell forward as Shikamaru withdrew his shadow bind. Thanks Shikamaru, sorry you didn't get to help Lee. It's alright Naruto, perhaps when this is over we can have a match. Sounds good, I look forward to it. You should probably get back to your team before they get worried. Actually, I told them to continue to the tower. I can travel with you to help until we meet up with them. Sakura looked horrified, but Naruto smiled. I appreciate it Lee, we'd be at a big disadvantage having to both fight off the enemy and protect Sasuke. He turned to Ino's team. What about you guys, want to travel with us, the more of us there are the less likely it is that we'll be attacked. As troublesome as you are Naruto, you do have a point. Joji just nodded. Like I'm going to be left out here by myself, I'm coming too. Then let's go, it's a few hours to travel to the tower. Lee was just about to grab it to Kabao. Lee, don't. Lee looked confused, but stopped. Sorry, it's just that Kakashi sensei said that it might hurt anyone who tried to wield it, that wasn't part of my family. No need to apologize, you were watching out for me, thank you, my friend. Lee walked over to Sasuke and lifted him onto his back, while Naruto strapped his sword to his back. Lee, are you going to be able to move quickly like that? Don't worry, I will not slow us down. If I do, I vow to run around Kanoha 150 times with a boulder on my back. And if I cannot, I shall do 100 finger push-ups. And if I cannot do that, okay Lee, I think we got it, so let's get going. They took off through the treetops, Naruto and Lee in front with Ino and Sakura behind them, and Shikamaru and Choji in the back. They made it to the tower before sunset, even though they had to stop once to eat at Choji and Naruto's insistence. They found Niji and Tenten waiting there and looking very bored. Figures that you would come together, the weak always group together for safety. Naruto's hand went for his sword when Sasuke stirred, the marks no longer present. We'll see who's weaker later, Niji. Thanks for your help Lee, I'll see you later for that match. Dotty waved to them as they all entered the tower and split up. How are you feeling Sasuke? My head's killing me, would you hit me? If I recall, you wanted to fight me. The reason I had Shikamaru interfere is because you weren't yourself, whatever that snake freak did to you, it was affecting you, so we had to take precautions. We have three days until this test is over, and we have to get it checked out. At least put me down. Fine, but if you attack again, I'm knocking you out again. Naruto stopped and let Sasuke get off his back before they kept walking. Other than the two teams that we just left, I know Gara's team passed, but like I said, there are still three days before it's over. How do you know? I ran into Kiba, who saw Gara's team get their second roll. Kiba says Gara's insane, and I have to agree after seeing the sight of his slaughter, almost every inch of the clearing was covered in blood. They continued into a large room where they found an inscription on the wall. After reading it, they decided to open the scrolls. The scrolls started to smoke and they dropped them to the ground. When the smoke cleared, a man in a vest with a horizontal scar over his nose and hair and a ponytail similar to Shikamaru's, stood over the scrolls. Congratulations on passing the second test. Hey Aruka sensei could you get someone to take a look at Sasuke? A guy calling himself Arachimaru bit him, and now there's this weird mark on his neck. Aruka looked scared. Are you sure that's what he said? It was him Aruka sensei he summoned snakes. He disguised himself as a Kusa ninja. Anko knows which one if you need to know what he looked like. We already know. The four looked up to see Kakashi. Samanbu found the real ones dead and without faces, one of Arachimaru's sick. We've called off the search for him because Anko went into the forest after him and hasn't reported him yet, so the Anbu are looking for her instead. I doubt we would have found him anyway. Sasuke, come with me, we need to seal that mark. Sasuke followed Kakashi without complaint, while Sakura asked Aruka about the meaning of the inscription. After explaining, Iruka showed them where they could stay the remainder of the test. Naruto spent most of his time in his room, where he could study from the scroll Kakashi gave him, inspected the new seal placed on him, and spread his wings. Finally, the test was over and I came to tell all the people who had already arrived where to go. When Naruto arrived at the arena, he felt it again. Well at least the possibilities have been narrowed down. It's not anyone on Eno's, Gara's, or Lee's team. It's not Kiba and it's not my team. Only six teams out of the possible 13 passed, and they all stood there, while the Hokage told them the true meaning behind the Chunin exam. At this point, a sick-looking person came out. I'm Hey Jekko Cough and I'm the proctor. We'll be having a preliminary since there are so many of you coughing the rules that anything goes. The match is over when a combatant is unconscious, dead, surrenders, or when the Hokage or I say so. Dottie pointed at a large screen on the wall. That cough will choose who fights who at random, but each will only fight once today. Before we begin coughing, are there any individuals who would like to quit? 
Know that if one person leaves their teammates can continue. No one did. Alright. The names on the board started to flash at high speeds, the first landing on Sasuke and the second on one of Kabuto's teammates. I can't remember his name. Everyone who's not fighting, please proceed to the balconies. As the Janin and their instructors moved, Kakashi walked near Sasuke and spoke quietly, but Naruto still heard him. Remember, the seal works with your will to suppress the curse seal. If it acts up, I will stop the fight. Naruto kept walking like he hadn't heard anything at all. Kakashi was just behind him as they walked to where Sakura was waiting. When the fight started, Sasuke charged in and aimed a kick to the older man's chest, but a glowing hand caught it. Sasuke started feeling weaker and broke away. What the hell was that? You're supposed to be a genius, why don't you tell me? Sasuke gritted his teeth and started making hand signs. Katen. Kakaku no Jutsu a large fireball shot out of Sasuke's mouth, his opponent dodged to the left, only to be kicked by Sasuke in the chin, sending him into the air. Naruto gripped the railing tightly. That nonsense, I can't believe he would stoop so low as to copy the technique of another leaf ninja. Sasuke appeared behind his opponent and attempted to kick him on the left side, but was blocked. Spinning, he kicked the right side and punched on the left. He rolled to the left and kicked him hard in the stomach, sending the man smashing into the ground. Sasuke landed slightly softer, but it took a moment for him to stand back up. Winner, Sasuke Chiha. Everyone's attention went back to the board as the medics carried Sasuke's opponent off on a stretcher. The names landed on Tenten and Tamari and didn't last long. It went just like it did in the Anime. The next match was Niji and Hinata. Niji proved just how big of an idiot he was by berating and mocking Hinata, she had almost given in when Naruto spoke up. Hinata, fate is nothing, kick him she smiled at him as she activated her by Akigen and got into the Juken stance. Very well, I'll show you it is meaningless to go against fate. Niji also activated the Hyuga bloodline limit and got into the Juken stance. They both rushed forward, going for open palm strikes, but never landing any hits. When asked, he explained the force behind the Juken style. To the observers, it all looked like an elegant dance, but a few people weren't paying attention only to their movement. One such person was the whiskered blonde. He had noticed that every time Niji's blow came near her, they would weave. It's her, she's the one using the, and the way they're moving is the same as the girl. His eyes widened in realization. Hinata is the girl I saw, she has the ability to hide her wings. It all makes sense, she was one of the only ones around when I first felt it, and her sensei is the Jinjutsu mistress, so it makes sense why it's so strong. He felt like kicking himself, but seeing Niji land a direct blow to Hinata's chest, right over her left lung, drove those thoughts out and replaced them with anger. Niji turned around and started walking away, but when Hei didn't call the match, he turned back to see Hinata back on her feet. You should accept your fate and give up. Hinata didn't answer, she just got back into the Juken stance. Hine, I'll end this now. Everyone in the room felt the energy he built up for the blow, but before they could intervene, Niji had reached Hinata and pushed his palm forward. His smirk was replaced with a scowl when she was clouded in smoke, and Naruto stood there, Niji's palm on his chest over his heart. Blood leaked from the corners of his mouth, but he didn't move an inch. You are a worthless piece of shit. You sink so low as to try and kill a member of your own family. You claim she is weak, but she is strong in a way you will never be. Naruto stepped back and walked back up to the balcony where Hinata was now lying. I'm sorry Naruto, I wasn't able to do it. He smiled and crouched down by her side. You did your best and that's good enough for me, just promise me that you won't let him get to you, and you'll keep trying to get stronger. She nodded and smiled. Good, now let's get a medic to make sure none of the damage is life-threatening. He picked her up and walked over to the medics, who fixed her up by the time the match between Ino and Sakura was over. It too ended like that in the anime. Naruto sat beside Hinata, while watching Shino use his bugs to eat all of Kabuto's chakra, causing Kabuto to pass out. The screen started to run through names again and landed on Kiba and Gara. Gara was transported into the area in a swirl of sand. Kiba clenched his hand around the railing and gritted his teeth. Proctor, I forfeit, there's on way I'm fighting, him. The Kanoha ninja that knew him well looked surprised, except for his team and Team 7. Gara even looked disappointed, but went back to where his team was standing. The screen started again and it chose Choji and Kabuto's other teammate. The way the man stretched didn't save him from Choji's meat tank, and it ended with him stuck between the wall and Choji's technique. After this match was Shikamaru vs Kankuro. This match was over very quickly, as Shikamaru used his shadow possession no jutsu and made him take the puppet off his back and hit himself on the head with it. They both fell and the puppet turned out to be Kankuro, but it was still the end of the match, as he too was hit on the head. Tamari was laughing along with Naruto and Kiba, most of the others were chuckling or just smiling. Last match is Naruto Uzumaki and Rock Lee. Naruto turned to Hinata. Looks like it's my turn, could I get you to do a few things for me? What? First, wish me luck, second, could you use the same on me? 
And third, watch my cloak for me please. She looked slightly concerned, but she nodded and started making hand signs. She nodded when she was done and he took off his cloak. Instead of the black t-shirt he used, he was in a black body hugging muscle shirt. She blushed when he handed her his cloak. D good luck Naruto. Thanks Angel Dottie smiled as she blushed a darker color and jumped into the arena where Lee was waiting, a smile on his face. Looks like we will have our match sooner than we thought. Yes, let it be memorable, and youthful dot Naruto unclasped the cloth on his sword and threw it. It stuck into the wall, and he stuffed the cloth and straps into his pants pocket. Ready when you are Lee dot they rushed forward, engaging in Tujutsu, blocking almost every blow, but Lee, being more experienced, landed a hard blow that sent Naruto skidding backwards. Despite this, Naruto's smile never wavered, and neither did Lee's. Naruto ran forward again, ducking under Lee's punch, and hitting him with an uppercut, flowed by a kick to the side that had Lee stumbling. Your youthfulness is indeed great, Naruto. It is an honor to face you. I feel the same about you, Lee. So what do you say we go all out? Dai sensei told me to only use it while protecting those precious to me. Lee, I shall allow it this once, such a youthful battle should be fraught to its fullest extent. Yes Guy sensei both boys leapt to a different end of the arena, Lee landed on top of the fingers of the statue, doing the ram seal. He removed the orange leg bracers and revealed the weight exactly like the ones on Naruto's arms and legs. He took them off and dropped them, they created a small crater when they hit. Naruto stood on the wall opposite and removed each set one at a time and dropped them together, making a crater the same size as the one Lee made. In the blink of an eye, they were back in the center of the arena, Lee blocking one of Naruto's legs, while Naruto holding Lee's punch. Naruto brought his leg down and jumped back, and as soon as he landed, both he and Lee were gone again. To all but those with a Sharingan and Byakugan as well as a few, they were little more than blurs. The two blurs shot towards each other, and then they saw Naruto flying upward. Lee appeared behind him and the bandages on Lee's arms wrapped Naruto in a cocoon. The two started to spin as they headed for the ground, then they hit and a massive cloud of dust shot up. Slowly the cloud receded until it was only around the crater. Lee limped out holding his right arm and crying. I shouldn't have used it, I tried to lessen the impact, but please forgive me Naruto. Everyone turned to the cloud, Hinata and a few others with tears in their eyes. I'm sorry guy sensei, I used the technique you taught me as a comrade. Pei 8 was about to call the match when a groan was heard from the crater. Naruto walked out of the dust massaging the back of his neck. Damn that hurt. No one said a word, they just stared at him. What no one answered so he looked around. Not seeing anything around him, he looked at himself, he was shirtless. Shit. He looked over his shoulder and saw his wings. Secrets out ha he scratched his cheek. Are you alright Naruto? My neck hurts a bit, but nothing too bad. He noticed Lee's condition. Lee, what happened, you didn't look this bad when I saw you use it before. I attempted to soften the landing. As much as I would like to continue our fight Lee, I don't think you should continue, you could really hurt yourself. Thank you for your concern, I accept my defeat, but I will want to rematch Naruto. I forfeit. I'd be happy to fight you again Lee. Keep up on training, but wait till you've recovered first. Lee nodded, and with Naruto's help walked over to the medics. When he finished, Naruto gathered up his and Lee's weights, along with Itu Kabao, and gave Lee's weights to Guy, who continued to rant on and on about Naruto's youthfulness. Will those who won please come down here. When they got down, Haid had a box, and Ibiki stood there with a clipboard. Now draw a slip of paper out of this box and read it off. He moved down the line from his right to left. Niji. 1. Shikamaru. 5. Toji. 6. Shino. 8. Sasuke. 3. Damari. 7. Ara. 4. Naruto. 2. Ibiki wrote on the clipboard as they read the numbers off. He turned it so they could see. The matches for the finals will be as follows. Match 1. Niji Hayuga vs. Naruto Uzumaki, Match 2. Sasuke Chiha vs. Gara Sabaku, Match 3. Shikamaru Nara vs. Joji Akimichi, Match 4. Tamari Sabaku vs. Shino Aburam. The finals will be held in a month's time at the large open arena of the village. While well, some of you have shown all your skills and others hardly any at all, the month break is to train in new skills or to improve on current ones. That is all, the time and date as well as directions for the Suna Ninja will be sent to you a week before the finals. Dismiss. All of the genin left except Naruto and Hinata's team. Naruto went up to the balcony to find Hinata passed out with a blush and a smile on her face. Kur and I walked up to him. I want to thank you, Naruto, for saving Hinata from Niji's attack. Most people would have died from an attack like that. We both know I'm not like most people. And I don't take kindly to anyone attacking my friends. He will pay for that in the finals. She asked you to help her conceal them, didn't she? So you noticed too. Yes I could help you too, but it's a bit late now. Probably, before too long, everyone in the village will know about mine. I won't say a word about hers, but I take it at least Shino knows. 
Hey, I know too, just because I didn't do so great at the academy doesn't mean I'm stupid. She passed out after she saw you. As much as I want to stay for her to wake up, I have to find Kakashi Sensei. So could you tell her I would like to meet her at training ground 7 tonight at 8? Sure, it's the least I can do. Dotty took his cloak off of the ground and took out the camera before placing it over her. He placed a hinge on himself and left the tower. He found Kakashi right where he thought he would, coming out of the adult bookstore. Hey Kakashi Sensei, can you? No, I can't train you, Naruto. I'm training Sasuke. That wasn't what I was gonna ask. Kakashi looked shocked when he turned to the blonde. Really? Then what did you want? I was wondering if I could get the next scroll on ceiling, I finished with the first one our second day at the tower. Just a second dot Kakashi disappeared in a puff of smoke to reappear a minute later in the same fashion. Here you go, there's one more that I have, after that maybe the Hokage can get you some more. Thanks sensei. See you later dot Naruto waved as he walked off. I was positive that he would ask me to train him, oh well that's just one less problem to deal with. Naruto was slightly angry at the dot the nonsense thinks that the world revolves around Sasuke and he doesn't think I knew he would blow me off, some genius. He headed for the hot springs to try to fix his chakra control problem. Let's see, if I remember correctly, that guy said that to walk on water you needed to constantly adjust the chakra output to make up for depth, waves, and weight I think. He was pretty close to the female baths, but still far enough away that they wouldn't care. He channeled chakra to his feet and attempted to step onto the water, only to fall in. Hot, 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 hot he jumped out of the water. Damn that Orochimaru and his damn seal dot he was about to try again when he heard perverted giggling like when Kakashi read his book. He looked around and found the source to be a white-haired man with a large scroll on his back. This is wonderful, my next book will be the best yet. Pervert the man only had enough time to turn and see the blonde jump away before there were screams. The women rushed out in towels and started beating the man and chased him off with Naruto following on the rooftops. He landed near the man. Hey pervert, you're lucky they were only civilians. You, you're the one who caused me to abandon my research. If that's what you want to call a pervert, stop calling me that brat. Don't you know who I am? No, should I? I'm the great toad sage, Jiraiya. Men envy me and women adore me. I'm a world-renowned author of great novels. So that's what you meant before, you were researching for your next perverted book. And you said you're Jiraiya the Toad Sage. Yes, I did. I am one of the Densetsu no Sanin along with Tsunade and the traitor Rajimaru. Then maybe you can help me. I don't have time for this. Jiraiya turned and started walking away. He placed a seal on me. Jiraiya stopped. He called it Gajo Fuin. Jiraiya turned around. Are you sure that's what he called it? Naruto nodded. Then come with me. Jiraiya started walking again, and Naruto followed him. Jiraiya led him to a clearing through which a stream flowed. Now expose the area where he placed the seal and channel chakra. Naruto made the ram seal. Kai dot his henge dispelled, exposing his upper body and wings. He then started channeling chakra to make the seals appear. Jiraiya's eyes widened when he saw the wings and even more when the seals appeared. A small smile crept onto his face. He looks so much like him okay brat, I can get rid of it, but it could hurt for a bit. Just get rid of the damn thing. Blue flames appeared on the fingertips of Jiraiya's hand. He slammed the flames into the same place as Orochimaru had. Gajo and dot Naruto fell to his knees holding his stomach, and when the pain stopped, he looked down and saw that the seal was gone. Naruto stood up and walked over to the stream, carefully stepping out onto the surface. He smiled when he didn't sink and found he could walk on the water with ease. Thanks, Hiro Senen. Don't call me that brat. My name's Naruto Uzumaki. Thanks for the help, now I can train to my fullest for the finals. Are you talking about the Chunin exam? Yeah, I'm in the first match against that idiot Niji Hayuga. Let me ask you something kid, have you ever used chakra that wasn't your own? If you're talking about Kai Ubi, you don't have to beat around the bush, I already know, and yes I have used its chakra, once out of rage and again at my request to help my teammate. But I can't handle very much of its power. I can help you with that if you want. So you're going to train me to use more of Kai Ubi's chakra. If you want me to. What do you think about Kai Ubi? I say go for it kid, in order to summon me, you'll need at least some of my chakra. It's good to have you back in Kai Ubi. Good to be back, Kit. Alright, when and where? Meet me at the memorial near training ground 7 at 8 tomorrow. Okay, see you then. Naruto put the hinge back up and walked away, unaware that Jureya was on longer there. Saratobi looked at his student over a pile of papers. To whom do I owe your visit to Jureya? Naruto Uzumaki. What about Naruto? Orochimaru placed a five pronged seal on him. You know what would have happened had I not removed it? Yes, it would have backed up the Kaiubi's chakra until it ripped him apart from the inside. No one told me about the seal or I would have removed it myself, so thank you Jureya, but that's not the reason you're here. If that was it, you wouldn't have come here, so what is it? I'm going to train him, at least until the finals. I thought you would like to know and I wanted to ask about his wings. 
You know as much on that subject as I do, he only revealed them today by accident. There is one thing I think will interest you, he's learning the basics of sealing from the scroll Kakashi is giving him, maybe you can help him in that aspect. You sure know how to milk a guy for all he's worth sensei. I'll consider it.